Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Kickstarter Crap. We're changing up the decorum a little bit. I got a new look myself, keeping it 100. You might be curious about the glasses. Those are LASIK lenses. Uh, I got LASIK surgery recently, and the docs told me to keep these on. Don't look at any bright lights or anything like that. So any, anytime I want to emphasize a point, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll remove them just so you guys know that I'm serious. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll use it a punchline, you know, like, you know, why the banana across the road? He wanted to split, sort of, sort of stuff like that, so you know when to laugh, sort of thing. Licky brush, lick your cat like a cat, or in other words, lick your cat because you're a freak of nature. Have you ever wanted to lick your cat? Now you can, without the fur balls. I hate that. It's a good thing they invented something to prevent you from getting fur balls from licking your cat. Introducing Licky Brush. Cats groom each other as a form of social bonding. As a human, you're left out of this intimate ritual. Oh, how disappointing to be left out of an animal's ritual. It's, it's too bad that I'm left out of the dog-sniffing other dog's assholes ritual. Man, and that one's so essential too, because that's a greeting. It's, it's a shame I'm left out of the bonobos fucking each other ritual. Who are you to wave your finger? Because that's, I mean, that's a normal ritual. I really like to be involved in that somehow. <laughs> I'm looking for a word to describe that. And no words are coming to mind. Gay is one that's coming. What do I... What are my Linus tech tips? Yeah, I'm sure the cat really understands that that's your tongue and is really like turned on by that fact. I'm sure the cat was yearning to be fucking licked. It wasn't part of the family before, but now that you got a silicone cat tongue, I finally found my forever home. It's in this house where all these grown ass people are passing around a, an unglorified pacifier and taking turns licking me. I feel like this is starting to get into the whole, like, Planet of the Apes sort of role reversal type situation, where we're so cucked that, that we're willing to actually give shit up for the cat. Like, we, we've always been this oppressive overlord for the cats. I think I should strip off all my clothes and hop in the cat's cage, just so the cat feels like it has a little bit more power. Let's say it's a century ago in 1916, and you have this wonderful invention that you're introducing to the market called the Licky Brush. You'd be lucky if they didn't just string you up in a tree because you're absolutely insane and they, they don't want precious materials being wasted on such an insane idea. Oh, you have a relationship problem with your cat? Well, here's a shotgun, sort it out. Relationship problem with your cat? Huh, well, uh, it's a cat. Ever think about that? Wow. Quick cat tip. If you want to connect more with your feline friend, doing cat-like things doesn't make them like you anymore. Hacking up a fur ball, licking them with your bare tongue, it won't make a difference. Grooming is more fun with licky. Try grooming your dog, rabbit, and other pets. Yeah, other pets. What do you mean, like a boa constrictor? You maybe groom a salamander or a skink? Emphasis on the grooming part, because when you, when you walk into a Petco, in the grooming department, all the associates look like this. Develop a deeper relationship with your cat. You want to have sex with your cat? Because if you want to, if you really want to have sex with your cat, this will actually friend zone you with your cat. Be part of the change. Let's change the way people connect with their feline housemates. So I think this is very stupid because uh, they're falling into the trap that change is innately a good word. Oh yeah, very positive change. Would you guys in the audience agree that change is good? Y oh, you answered yes to it? Well, you're fucking retarded. Invite your friends and their cats over for licky parties. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do with my time. I want to invite my friends and their cats over so I can lick some pussy. Oh wait, tail toppers for cat depression. I noticed that leaving my cat alone for over 12 hours a day had a toll on the overall quality of life for my kitty cat. He wasn't as frisky as he used to be. He was depressed. Okay, well, if you're away for 12 hours a day, maybe a cat isn't for you. Maybe a goldfish is more your speed. That's when I noticed that scratching my cat on the bass of its tail would relax and make him so happy. And that's how the tail topper was invented. 3D printed googly eyes and a mustache to clip onto your cat's asshole. 
That ought to do the trick. It's just like rubbing the base of your cat's tail. Go find someone, ask them to give you a massage on your shoulders, and then ask them to attach some chip clips to your shoulder blades and see if you can tell the difference. I bet you you can't. This token tail topper is to bring awareness to the issue of pet depression. Please consider backing. This is how you know when someone has completely abandoned any semblance of a good product. It's to raise awareness, especially when they say it's a token. We, we all know what he means there. Is It's fucking garbage. It's raising awareness garbage. Rudy, small dog or cat, pet carry hoodies. Just imagine bouncing balls, retrieving sticks, and sniffing butts. This is way better than any of those. I so need a Rudy in my life. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yep. Boun yeah, bouncing balls and sniffing butts. Yeah. Oh, and nothing better than a Rudy. If Rudy actually meant attaching a dog to your body for hours on end, no, no, I can't say that I agree. As you can see, Jackson absolutely loves hanging out in his Rudy. No, I could tell, just like the cats from earlier, I can tell with a very expressive face that he enjoys this shit out of that fucking Rudy. No, I mean, he's not struggling, so clearly he enjoys it, right? I'd venture to guess if you just put on the Rudy, he'd come over and actually insert himself in the pocket of it, li like a kangaroo baby. The inspiration for Rudy came from growing up on a farm. I can remember the days when we used to put kittens in the pockets of our hoodies and just how much they loved it. Yeah, I'm a farm guy myself as well. I grew up on a farm. Um, we had uh, tortoises and we had, uh, we had a couple lemurs. Real good farm animals, much like cats. Y yeah, no, you gotta have a lot of cats on the farm. They produce a lot of milk. All we needed was a bigger pocket, right? So that's what we did. I'm okay with this if your dog is crippled, you know? You, you really want to be close to your dog. You love it. I understand it. Maybe other people would put the dog down at that point. But if you really love your dog or your cat, you, and if its legs are just twisted and mangled mess, maybe you shove it in the pocket and you give it a walk around the town. However... If it's just so that you can be cute with your dog and have the dog be cute with you, then take a bullet. Once your pet gets a taste of just how comfortable and cozy, not to mention how lazy they can be. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me, I gotta stop it there, right? Because she said how lazy they can be. Maybe this is just me. I'm gonna need your guys' feedback on this one because I have no fucking idea. Every dog I have met ever has been very willing and ready to go out on a walk and at a fucking moment's notice. They're, they're never like, oh, oh, do we have to do this shit again? No, I don't want to go out. Just leave me here to die. Yeah, no, it's better this way. Rudy can support pets that are under 15 pounds, like Jackson here. Perfect for your fur baby. No, the dog that's in your pocket is not a fur baby. Uh, you just have dried up ovaries. Okay, so there's this group of people out there who really love their small little Yorkshire schnitzel little things that are fluffy, white, big beady eyes, be it a pug, be it this or that. You know, the smaller the limbs, the less mobile it is, the better. You know, if it's a pug, it's just a nice little thing that you can fucking shake and do whatever you want with. And those people... Some of those people like to treat it as their baby. They'll call it their fur baby. And really, they don't do the dog any favors because they make the dog super dependent on them. And uh, oftentimes, it's just, fu it's just fucking gross to witness, right? We've all seen the lady, right? W walking her dog, but not really walking her dog. Strollering her dog. You know, I get it. There's a lot of pugs with fucking blown out eyes and, uh, and legs that are practically vestigial. But if they aren't vestigial and you can actually walk your pug, please walk it. Don't put it in a fucking stroller and stroller it around. You want to know what I think really causes all the pet depression out there? I don't think that it's uh, not licking your cat with, with a real cat tongue. I don't think it's uh, not having a little toy to attach to your cat's asshole. And I don't think that it's stuffing your animal into a rucksack. I think what really causes depression is not interacting with your pets or walking them on a normal basis and treating them like the companions that they are.
Alright, let's hang up on him. There's like no, there's no button. There's no button. There's no button to hang up on him.